Hello, this is Mike Panaki with Network Protocol Specialists. In our video here, I'm going to show you how we can add new configuration profiles to Wireshark and how we can add custom columns. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here and click on Configuration Protocols. When I do this, it shows me any configuration protocols I've already created. One of the reasons that we would want to create configuration profiles is that we want to create custom columns and custom colorization based on a particular protocol or some sort of analysis we're doing. What I'll do is I'll come in and click on New and give the profile a name. And in this case, it's going to be for DNS, so I'm going to call it DNS. I'll click OK. Now when I do that, it resets all my colorization and columns back to the default. I don't want colorization on, so I'm going to click on View and turn off colorization. The next thing I'm going to do is click on Edit, come down to Preferences, and bring up the preferences window. And I'll click on columns. Now here are the default columns that are part of Wireshark when we install it. What I want to do is add a new column called DNS time. By default it sets it as number. This is the frame number. So I'll come down here and I'll click on this drop down and I'll scroll up and I'll go to custom. This allows me to enter a custom field name in here. For this example, I'm going to type in dns.time. Now you notice that as I was typing it in, it was showing me all of the different options that were available. I know I have this right because this box turned green. Now normally, I would drag this up and put it where I wanted it. Unfortunately, with the recording software I'm using, it doesn't allow me to drag it. In fact, I'll show you. When I try and drag it up, drop it right in here after number, comes right back down again. If you do this on your machine, it'll slide right up to where you want it because you're not going to be running the recording software that I'm running right now. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now when I do that, we see that if we scroll over, we now see our DNS time column over here. This time represents the response time for getting a response back to the DNS query. So in this example, for www.l.google.com, it took about 9 milliseconds to get a response. Well, we can scroll down through here and we can find if we have any response times that take longer than we might like to see. For example, right here, we see that we had a response for this reverse lookup, this pointer record lookup, took 194 milliseconds. We'll keep going down. Ooh, now here's a good example of where we sent out a query and it took 1.68 seconds to get a reply back for that. So we could drop, we could expand our details section down here and what we would see is that the request was in frame 31. So we sent this request in frame 31 and we got the reply back in frame 91. Now if I wanted to get even more specific I could click on the transaction ID, which is going to be unique for each DNS query I send, right click and say prepare as filter and select it. Now what this will do is this will set a filter on DNS ID and the ID of that DNS query I just entered. I can then hit apply and I can see my requests in here and I can see the replies coming back. So what this does this gives me an idea of how long it's taking to get a reply back. Now the thing that we see here is that the request I sent out was for the quad A record. This is our IPv6 request. Why am I seeing this request go out? Because I've set up IPv6 on this computer. So we can see where setting up IPv6 causes us to send IPv6 queries out and then we have to wait for replies for those. I'm going to hit clear to clear out this filter. And we're right back down here. There's frame 31 where we sent out that request. So again, we can scroll through here and we can even come in and click on that time column. And I'll click on it twice so it sorts the longest times up to the top. So we can see which DNS queries took the longest to get responses. So this is a way we can go in, we can create custom profiles, we can change the columns for those profiles and then use that to do analysis for a specific protocol. Now down here at the bottom of the screen I see where it says profile DNS. I can click on that 
and it would show me all of the different profiles. So I can go back to default and now it will show me my default profile and in this case there's no more DNS time column. This is a way we can speed up the way that we do analysis by adding profiles and custom columns. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.